Yarny friends, I'm Sarah Satch. Welcome to my crochet channel and welcome to our Friday Fun Day video. So for today's video, we're going to make a checkered hot pad. Now the neat thing about this is you can make it two thicknesses and make it super thick or you can make it just one thickness depending on what you're going to use it for. If you're going to use it for an actual hot pad, which I think you should, and you're going to set something hot on it, one thickness is probably okay. But if you're going to use it to go in and hold a casserole dish or a pot that's super hot, make it two thicknesses. Now this isn't an actual stash busting pattern for our scrap happy patterns, but it really is. <laughs> You can get in your cotton yarns, medium weight number fours, and come up with lots of different options. Like this one I did in holiday or Christmas colors. This one I did in Thanksgiving or fall colors. And this one I did for Halloween in some orange and green and black colors. And it's really fun to get in your yarn stash and just come up with some different colors and remember, sometimes we think colors won't go together, and they do. And you can use solids, sort of. That's got two colors together. Here's solid, variegated. You can also use sort of an ombre like this one with a solid, and just have some fun. It doesn't take very much yarn to make these, and they're super great to make up a bunch and have them on hand for gifts or just when they're needed, all right? So this is our checked hot pad. It measures eight by eight inches, so it's a nice size. And you can find the pattern on my blog as always. And I'll put that link down in the notes underneath this video. All right, so let's talk about what we need to make some of these hot pads or pot holders. Now each one of them is made with two different colors of cotton yarn. And I've used lots of different types of yarn. Sugar and cream in the colorway called Holiday Stripes and red is what this one is. And that's what we're going to do for our demo today. This one is an unfinished square. You can see that because you can make them one layer or two and we're going to make a two layer one today just to show you how to do that okay now this one i made with peaches and cream in the colorway called oasis and then i just used an orange cotton that i had on hand all right this one i did with the premier home i picked these up at the dollar tree I think back then they were a dollar, but they've gone up to $1.25 now. And I just alternated with the green and the dark orange. And I wanted to make three different hot pads that were completely different so that you could see that you can really have a lot of fun with them. You can use solids, variegated, um, like this one is sort of a Christmas ombre with solid red. This one is, I call this my Halloween one, but it doesn't have to be just for Halloween, of course, because it's dark orange and bright green and black. And you can see how pretty that is when that's stitched up. All right. And then this one, of course, is that speckly one. I, I, they just It's just an original color, but it's the one called Oasis by Peaches and Cream. And then just this solid orange. All right, so what we're using is cotton yarns because we're going to be using these as hot pads or pot holders, okay? And like I said, you can make them one layer or two, which we're going to do a two layer one today, so that you can see how much thicker it is and safer for you to use, all right? So you're going to need approximately two ounces of two different colors in order to make one that is two layers thick. Or you just need one ounce of two different colors for one layer thick. This one is just one layer thick. One ounce of two different colors for a one layer or two ounces of two different colors for a two layer. All right. So we're going to be stitching with our H hook, which is a five millimeter. 
and you just need a needle for weaving in ends and your scissors. So I've got my two colors. I'm using that sort of Christmas stripe and a solid red. Um, and this is the one that I already have prepared and I'm going to make another one to go with this one so that we can put them together and I can show you how to put them together and make a nice thick hot pad. All right, so I've got my one color or my color one. Move that out of the way for now. All right, so I made my slip knot and we're going to chain 26 chains. Now remember, when you're stitching with cotton, it doesn't have as much stretch as a acrylic or wool. And so you wanna make sure that you stitch this beginning chain just a little bit loose. We don't want the end of our hot pad to pucker up and not fit together with our other square, okay? So loosely chain 26 chains. All right, so I have 26 chains chained a little bit loose. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to begin in the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four, and stitch a double crochet. The chain three at the beginning counts as our first double crochet, those three chains that we skipped. Then we stitched one. We're going to stitch a double crochet in the next chain. And in the next chain, we're going to stitch another double crochet, but we're going to change colors. So I've got my red right here. And I'll show you how we're going to do this. There we go. All right, so we're going to begin our double crochet. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops. But we're not going to finish this double crochet. We're going to bring in our red or our color two and finish that double crochet. All right, we're gonna let that tail drop Hold it with our finger so we can hold that in place. And now we're going to stitch four double crochets with the red. And we're going to stitch over this tail of yarn. All right, so. One. Two. Three. Now we're gonna stitch our fourth one and change to our color, back to our color one. So we'll go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, change back to our color one, and finish that double crochet. By doing it this way, it gives us a nice block of color. If we were to make this top loop in the color one or the previous color, we'd have one loop that wasn't, wouldn't be the right color. Let me show you what I mean with this one. Okay, let's say we're gonna finish with the red. And now we're going to do our next double crochet in our next color. All right, so yarn over, go in the next loop, and look what happens. The top of our next double crochet has a red loop and it doesn't look as neat and tidy. And that's the reason that we do it that way. All right? All right, so we'll take that last loop out. There we go. We'll finish with our next color and then we'll double crochet over that yarn that we're carrying across. And I know this can seem just a little bit clumsy at first, but once you get going, you'll realize it is not at all. It is super easy. Just getting used to the color changing because we're changing colors every four stitches. See how much nicer and neater that looks? All right, so let's do our next four double crochets. And remember, we're carrying our yarn from the previous color and stitching over it. There's our fourth stitch, so we'll just begin it and then we'll change to our next color and stitch our next four double crochets. Now 
we get nice even blocks of color all right so we went to our last one and now we have one two three four double cro or four chains left not double crochets but we are going to place one double crochet in each all right so one two three some more yarn out here there we go and four now this is our last double crochet on this row and when we turn our work we're going to begin with red okay so we'll go ahead and finish this one and chain three all right and so this is how your first row row one should look you have your tail of yarn i'm going to lay it underneath there so it's not sticking out there all right here's our tail of yarn where we started with our chain and we have one two three four five six sets of four double crochets nice and neat now we're ready for row two we've stitched our chain three and we're going to turn our work okay now we want to make sure that we stitch over this tail of yarn so it's up here when we need it okay so we're going to bring that up there like that and we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next three now our chain three counted as our first and then we're going to stitch three double crochets <clears throat> voice is a little scratchy today all right so here's our fourth one we're going to begin it and then finish it with our next color now every now and then you may need to pull a little on that yarn that you're carrying because we don't want it drooping out of the stitches all right so let's do our four double crochets one two so i noticed i have a knot in my yarn um, that's okay because this is a demo i already have the second square already made and so we're just going to ignore that for the demo normally i would cut that and join that in correctly all right all right so we've stitched two of our double crochets here's our third one and now we're going to begin our next one and finish with our red and like i said you may have to pull on that yarn that you carry just a little but not too tightly all right so now we'll do the next four in our red each of our blocks of color consists of two rows just so you know so we get a nice thick block or square all right so there's the first three and now we'll do our last one and change colors all right and so I'll just finish this across four double crochets in each of my blocks and changing colors on that last of each. And always stitch over your carried yarn. if you feel like that the carried yarn is showing through too much you can tighten up your gauge a little bit make your double crochets just a little bit tighter and that will keep that from showing through all right all right now when we turn color turn to the other side and finish this last block let me show you we're going to be doing the opposite in color so our first block is going to be the red instead of the uh, ombre or variegated that I've chosen all right so I'm going to make my last stitch 
and then I'm going to go ahead and change to my red because I want my chain three for the next row to be in the red, okay? And see how that works? We've made our first row, our it's second row, but our first row of blocks because you can see each of our blocks consist of two rows, all right? All righty. And I really do love how this one turned out with the solid red with the variegated. It's very pretty. But this is how row two should look. You've got 12 of the red double crochets and 12 of your opposite color, whatever two colors you're using. 24 stitches on each row. And this makes up our first, even though it's two rows of stitching, it's our first row of blocks. We changed colors and chain three. We've chained three. We're going to turn our work. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet. And remember to pull your color one up, or this is actually our color two. Uh, we're starting with red on this row because you're gonna go to your next double crochet and stitch over that because we want it to be up there for when we change colors. All right, so on this row, as you can see, we're doing the opposite in order to form that checkerboard look. So our chain three counted as our first double crochet, and I stitched three more and changed colors on my fourth. One, two, three and here's our fourth one and again we're going to change colors at the end of that fourth one two <laughs> my yarn's trying to chase me down there three four, change colors, and repeat. And when you're using two colors like that, sometimes they get wound around each other and you have to unwind them. That's just the nature of it. <laughs> And you can see I'm just working across, stitching four double crochets and changing colors on the last stitch of each of the squares or blocks in order to form our checkerboard look. All right, so here's our last one. Um, what we are going to do here though, is we're going to drop that color and hold it with our finger because we don't need it until the second block. All right, so let me show you what I mean. So the last four we don't worry about carrying on this one. There we go. We're going to chain three because when we turn, we're going to begin with the same color. And you can see on the back here, we dropped it right here and we'll pick it back up right there, and that'll keep the back of our work just a little bit more neat, okay? But this is the way that row three should look. We changed colors and we're doing the opposite, but we're still stitching it the same in that we chained three, we have our three double crochets, we changed colors on the fourth, and then we changed, and then we stitched <laughs> four double crochets, changed colors, four double crochets, changed colors, and it makes a nice and tidy checkerboard or checkered look. All right, we're ready for row four. So we have chain three. We're going to turn our work, get everything to the back here. We'll double crochet in the next double crochet.
and then again, we're going to change colors, and we dropped our color here, and so we're just going to pick it up. It goes right in there, and then we go right to that first, make sure you go in that first double crochet. Don't skip over it. There we go. Snug everything down, and we just stitch like we've been doing. And I like to do it that way just because I think it makes the back look neater. But it's up to you. You know, you have to do what works best for you. These are just my tips that work best for me. Okay. But see, we don't, we didn't carry it across here like we did here. And it gives you another option of how to do that. You can pick it up here and carry it or not. I just wanted to show you that so that you can decide for yourself how you want to do that and what is easier for you to do. When you're first learning how to do this sort of stitch, I mean, it is double crochets, but learning to change colors often can be a little bit overwhelming. And knowing when to let your colors drop and carry and all of that can be a little bit hard. But once you get it figured out, it's a piece of cake. I mean, it really is. Just knowing on this particular pattern that on the fourth stitch we always change colors at the end of that double crochet and you'll stay right on track. And get the twisties out of my yarn there. And like I said, it happens. All right, so we're just going across, stitching four double crochets in each of the colors, and then changing on that fourth stitch. Oops, that's the third. <laughs> Got to do the fourth or you'll be off count. There we go. All right, here's my fourth one. Now on this one, we need to carry the yarn because we're going to be changing colors on the next row, okay? All right, so I'm on my third one, and then my fourth, and at the end of this one, because we are going to be changing colors, we're going to go ahead and change to our next color and chain three. And we do that because we're going to be alternating back to this, where we'll have these two rows up here, and above here will be red, in order again to get that checkerboard look. And that is the way that row four should look. And so now what you're going to do is, we've chained three, we're going to bring this to the other side, and I always sort of flip it through the two. I think it kind of helps it lay better. There we go. And since we changed colors, you're gonna need to stitch over this tail of yarn and we'll go in the next stitch because the chain three counts as our first. And then we'll stitch two, and then on the last of the four, again, we're going to change colors. All right, so now I think you know what we're doing. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue to repeat these first four rows two more times. You'll do two more rows like this and two more rows like this, alternating the rows, all right? So you're going to repeat row one, two, three, and four two more times so that you have a nice square, all right? You've got this. You can do it. I have repeated these first two rows two more times. And this makes a really nice size pot pad or pot holder, all right? But if you wanna just make it one thickness like this one, that's totally fine, and then you can do the trim that I'm going to show you. But I wanted this one to be super thick, so I made another one. So I have two of them. I'm going to put them together and add a trim, all right? So it's up to you, one thickness or two. Just remember, 
If it's two thicknesses, it's twice as safe. All right, so we're gonna put the two together and you can decide um, front and back and all that. It doesn't matter one bit. It's totally up to you. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're going to leave both yarns attached. All right, and so I'm gonna turn this so that I can come across the top. And I'm gonna grab that red one and chain one. All right, so we're gonna be going through both thicknesses and we're going to be changing colors every four stitches in order to make it checkerboard, okay? So basically what we're going to do is stitch an even row of single crochet all the way around our hot pad, stitching the front and back together. And again, if you're only doing one thickness, it's done exactly the same. The only difference is you're not going through the two thicknesses. All right, so we've got our two colors here. We're going to go in that first single crochet or that first double crochet and stitch a single crochet, stitching the front and back together. All right, so we'll do, there's one, two, three, and four. Now, if you're just doing a solid row, just go for it. Stitch a single crochet all the way around, and in the corner place a single crochet, chain one, chain one single crochet. But if you're changing colors, you're gonna to wanna to do that on your fourth single crochet. All right, so now I'll go to the next set of four and stitch my four single crochets in the next color. And changing colors with a single crochet is similar to changing colors with a double crochet. The only difference is we don't have that yarn over, okay? So we go in, we pull up a loop. We have two loops like we normally do on a single crochet, only we finish that single crochet with our next color, all right? And this is a really simple technique, and it has a really big impact because it's super cute. And so we're just sort of following along, stitching four single crochets, one in each of the double, and changing colors on the fourth across the top. And if you are stitching the front and back together, remember to stitch over that tail of yarn. Well, whether you are or not, you need to stitch over that tail of yarn. But also, you're stitching the front and back together and to keep things lined up. And of course, across the top here, it's super easy because we have those stitches to stitch in. But when we move to around the side, it'll be just a little bit more complicated. Not too much, but just a little. All righty, there's that one. All right, whoops, got to finish in that next color. There we go. All right, now we'll do our four. One, two, there we go, three, and then we're in that last stitch, four. All right, so that's how it looks across the top and we've stitched the front and the back together. All right, so now we're gonna go down the side. And it, it, it's gonna feel a little complicated, but it's really not, okay? So we're gonna start with the chain one, and we're gonna go right in that same stitch and stitch our first single crochet. And so what you want to do is make sure that in each of these blocks, you stitch four single crochets, okay? And the key to getting it right is to try to go through the stitches themselves and not the holes. And when you're putting two together like this, it can be a little bit complicated at first. So there's one, two, three. And now we're gonna go in our fourth spot there. Get in there, there we go. <laughs> 
and then we'll finish that with our next color. All right, so now in this next set, we want to do four single crochets. We want to try to go in those stitches just like we would if we were just stitching along evenly. Only this time we're going to place exactly <laughs> four single crochets in each of those stitches. And we want to make sure we stitch over the tail of yarn that we're not using. All right, there we go. Oops, got to change colors on that fourth one. All right, and see how that looks. We went around the same because the color is the same and then we changed to our red and now we're going to change to our green and we'll continue this around. On the bottom there where we started with our chains that will be easy as well because we'll have those chain stitches to stitch in. There we go. Didn't want to come through. There's one, two, three, four, and change to our next color. All right. And I know it seems a little complicated. It's really not. And once you get going, it'll be just fine. Now, again, if you do not want to change colors every four stitches on your trim, you don't have to. You can choose one of the colors or you can choose another color and make it super fun. It's up to you. Maybe the person you're making this for has three colors in their kitchen, like pink, yellow, and red, or red, white, and blue, or whatever, <laughs> you know. I always wanna put yellow in everything. <laughs> I love yellow. Alrighty, and so see how that works? All right, so you can either just go on around and stitch evenly single crochets, or you can change colors every four stitches, trying to keep them in those blocks. And of course, when you come around here, it'll be nice and easy because we have those chain stitches and then back up and join where we started. And then we'll make that little loop so we can hang it up. So I have completed that all the way around my four sides, stitching four single crochets in each of those blocks. And I changed colors every other block but of course down here it looks a little lighter but i did change colors with the pinker yarn it's really not pink it's like a light red but anywho <laughs> or if you single crocheted all the way around placing single crochet chain one single crochet in each of our corners and when we get back up here we've i've chained one i'm going to join to my first single crochet with a slip stitch and now we're going to grab both strands of those yarn and we're going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then we'll come right back in that same stitch and join with a slip stitch. And this will give us a nice sturdy handle to hang up our hot pad with. Now, you don't have to do two strands. I just really like to when I'm doing a double thick one because I think it gives it just a little bit more um, ability to hold up. Okay, so I'm going to tie that off all snugged in. And now all I need to do is weave in my end. So I tidied up the back. It's all weaved in and everything is perfect. And this is my checked hot pad in my Christmas colors. And then you can make one, of course, in fall or Thanksgiving-y type colors. Or you can even make one in Halloween colors. And you can do them in any colors that you want to with any yarn as far as long as it's cotton number four, any of the cottons or cotton blends you have on hand and make some nice hot pads to have on hand for when you need extra gifts. I know, like I said, it seems a little bit complicated to change colors a lot, but once you get going, you're gonna love it. <music>